can see yourselves. You guys look really good this morning. You guys look like you slept very well last night. Ah, you're a good-looking bunch. You know, as we gather today, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, as we go through our entire uh, time with the Lord today, let us have one thing in our hearts. Thanks. We have so many things to be thankful for, don't we? We are truly a blessed people this morning. Before we go any further, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we're just so thankful this morning that, Lord, you are so good. And, Lord, that your faithfulness and your steadfast love, Lord, your word tells us that they last forever. Father, we truly are thankful. We truly are blessed. And, Father, we just want to begin this time this morning by just simply saying how much we love you, Lord. So, Father, as we gather to get, gather together today, Father, it is my prayer that we worship you in spirit and truth, but also, Lord, let's just have a time of celebration as we celebrate your grace and your goodness that is so real and so relevant in our lives today. Father, we just love you and we praise you and we ask that you meet us in a very special way as we worship you today. Father, we love you and we ask all these things in Jesus' name and all God's people say together, amen. Well, I hope you had an opportunity to be warmly greeted this morning. If not, hey, you're warmly greeted by me this morning, so good morning. And uh, I hope you had an opportunity to grab a bulletin. If not, make sure you grab one of those. Check out all the important dates. Many different things coming up. Uh, last week, uh, Kathy and I were passing out invitations to, uh, for our church family to, to come to our open house, a Christmas open house at our place. If you did not get one of the sheets that Kathy's passing out last week, she'll be right over here, but she's going to be at the back door at the close of service, and she'll get you, make sure you get one of those, but we'd love you uh, just to come by our house in a few weeks and visit for a little bit. So anyways, grab one of those on the way out if you did not get one of those. And um, here in a second, for those of you that are visiting with us today, um, something is about to happen. It's called mugging for missions. I, we call it a child money march for missions, but sometimes it looks like a mugging. Uh, but what's about to happen, if you've brought any loose change in with you this morning, our kids are going to come grab these cups up here, and they're going to come shake you down for all the loose change that you might have in your pockets. And uh, just know that every one of those coins goes directly to the mission fields. And real quick, before I turn the kids loose, I don't have any change this morning. Everybody say, aw. And you know, I was going to ask Pastor Dan this morning if I could borrow two bucks. But after hearing the hunting stories from Pastor Dan... He can't find two bucks, so I'm sorry, I don't have anything. So kids, if you're ready, go ahead and permissions.
I see your mic there, Tammy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we had an eventful weekend. I'm going to ask Pastor Heather to come share. We uh, had the opportunity to have our teens at MegaFest. And uh, before you go, can I just say something? I'm very thankful for Pastor Tim and Pastor Heather and the work and the efforts that they put in with our youth. But also, they were in charge of the MegaFest for the whole entire Virginia district this weekend. And being able to be there, uh, watching you guys... Do your thing. I'm just very thankful for how you represented not just the district, but you represented the Winchester Church uh, on our district. So I just I want to give them a round of applause. So I'm very thankful for you. And I'm going to interrupt you before you even get started again. I just want to share just real quick. We had a fun trip home, didn't we, youth? 37 degrees, rain, no heat in the van. It was a good time. Um, I renamed the church van. We're going to change the decals on the side. It's going to be called the Polar Express now. So if you ever want to ride the Polar Express, Winchester First Church has the Polar Express. But I told the youth before we left, we knew right before we stopped for dinner, right when we were leaving Lynchburg, uh, they were complaining about, man, this is going to be horrible right home. It's going to be freezing and all this stuff. They were worried about it and all this stuff. And I said, hey, look at the bright side. In three hours when you get home, you'll have heat. So anyways. <laughs> So we need to get that van fixed before winter retreat. <laughs> we could. Um, but MegaFest was awesome. We had about 100 teens and adults come to Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, the whole purpose of MegaFest is to show off your gifts and talents for God. And it's a great place where we build community. A lot of the teens, they made new friends. Um, it was an amazing event. The theme for this year was just giving it to God and not letting things uh, block you get in the way of you being with God. And um, one of the analogies that Pastor Willis, he was our speaker um, this weekend, he used was a U-Haul. He was traveling and with um, a buddy, and he had someone following them in a U-Haul. And he kept looking back, seeing the U-Haul, you know, everything was good, and kept driving. And then suddenly he doesn't see the U-Haul anymore. And his buddy calls him. He's like, yeah, I lost you a long time ago. I don't know who was following you, but cars kept getting in the way and separating me from you. So this whole weekend, we were encouraging the teens to just not let things get in the way. Keep your eye on God. Keep, um, stay close to him so that you can continue to be in relationship with him and, you know, um, live out his will in your life so others can see that. Um, so it was an amazing weekend. Um, we... The adults dominated in dodgeball. You should have seen Pastor Dave. We were very concerned he was going to throw out his back again. So um, <laughs> um, it was a good thing he ended up quitting uh, halfway through the second round. But <laughs> So we got him back safe and sound. Um, but it was an awesome event. Uh, those who went to F uh, MegaFest Festival of Life um, in Lynchburg now have the opportunity to go in March to Boston, Massachusetts at Eastern Nazarene College to compete with not just the Virginia district, but every sim single district from Maine to Virginia. So it's like tons of districts. Um, so there will be hundreds and hundreds of teenagers gathered in March at Eastern Nazarene College. And we as a youth group are planning on going. And this awesome thing happened this weekend, which I'm going to share with you. Um, we had EMC reps at our event this weekend. And it, they... For some reason, God was just working in so many ways this weekend. And the EMC rep uh, came to me and was like, I want to do something to bless the teens on the Virginia district. So EMC has agreed to cover $100 of every student and every adult who attends this event 
to try to get as many people from Virginia up to Boston. So that is a huge blessing. So now the cost went from $300 to $200 for like five days in Boston. So that is a huge blessing. God was working this weekend, and we are just so grateful. I bowed out of the dodgeball game, not because of my back. It was just because I was winded. I couldn't go anymore. <laughs> so, anyways. All right, if our ushers are come at this time, we'll continue our worship through giving this morning. Let us pray. Father, we just come before you once again. Lord, so thankful and so grateful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. But most of all, Lord, thankful for your son, Jesus. Lord, it's your son that made all the difference in our lives. And Father, we truly are thankful this morning as your people that you have chosen to work in our lives. So, Father... We are just so thankful for your providential hand that is so real and so relevant in our lives. So, Father, as we worship through our giving this morning, it is my prayer that you'll bless each gift and that you'll bless each giver. So, Father, we just ask that you bless and multiply these offerings today for the furtherance of your kingdom in Winchester and beyond. Amen.
John 3, 31, it says, The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. Let's continue worshiping. Stand with us if you're able.
Deuteronomy 30, 33, 27 says, The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Well, who enjoyed that? I thank you for that song. I'm kind of bummed that it ended. So I really enjoyed that. Aren't you thankful though that we can lean in on the everlasting lasting arms of our Father? You know what a what a great segue uh, to go into prayer because when you go to the Lord in prayer, when you come before Him, that's simply what you do is you just simply lean into Him. And you know what's really cool when you lean into Him, He's leaning back, and you can meet the Father in the middle for a hug. As we go to our time of prayer this morning, I just want you to remember that, that you can just simply lean into Him. So as we go to, I guess today's theme, we'll call it the leaning time. So as we go to our leaning time, if any one of you want to have a good talk with the Lord this morning, just know that these altars are open. They're always open in our services, but just know this is our time where we come before the Father. And if you just need to chat with Him this morning, you come and chat with Him. I'm going to ask Pastor Dan if he would lead us uh, at the close of this song and lead us in our prayer time today. Thank you, Lord, that you call us out just as we are. That 
you don't want us to clean ourselves up before we come to you. That you love us just where we're at. Whatever we're going through right now, you're there. Lord, I don't know where we're all at today. But I know there's some people here that are need a special touch from you. Jesus, I just ask that you could clear that way. That you could let your love, your arms go around them. That, Lord, you could take their burdens. That you could touch their lives. That, Lord, you could just show them who God truly is. Who you truly are. And how much they truly mean to you. this time of thanksgiving this week we have a lot to be thankful for Lord I, I couldn't even begin but I'm truly thankful for what you've done for each and every one of us how you saved us how you love us and you draw us close Lord in this time right now I just pray that you would draw us near Lord if we have some work to do let's get it done That's truly what you want us to be for. All of God's people said, Amen. Hey, good morning. I almost asked you guys to sing that Leaning on the Everlasting Arms again. That was just... <laughs> after a weekend, after a weekend with the youth and uh, listening to, I think it is an ultra praise band, our district praise team, um, listening to that band and the jumping around and all that stuff, I almost literally started doing the whole jumping around and seeing how many of you would join me. But I was watching out of the corner of my left eye and... It's, I always love when we, whenever the song Leaning on the Everlasting Arms is sung, I, I love watching people because when we go to the leaning part of it, you ever realize, how, maybe you guys saw it up here singing, how many people actually lean? <laughs> Have you caught that? It's, it's like the word transposes their whole body and it's like lean and they're leaning one way or the other. So thank you for your time of leaning into the Lord this morning. Well, God is so good, isn't he? Uh, and I, I can't even... To begin to describe um, the blessings and the feelings that we get from a God who is literally steadfast in His love and steadfast in His care, steadfast in His concern over each one of us. We truly are. When, when I say we are a blessed people, I'm not just saying that because that's something pastors typically say. When I say that we truly are a blessed people, we really are a blessed people. Amen? And, and I say it because I experience it. I say it because I feel it. I say it because I see what he's doing in your lives. I see what he's doing in my life. I see, I see what he's doing in the life of the church. And God is so steadfast in his love for each one of us, it's beyond words. And there is nothing that can compare to the steadfast love and care of, a holy God, of the holy God. Amen? Can I read a little story to you this morning? Is that all right? Well, I was going to anyway. It's not like I really need your permission, you know. But I just thought I'd be nice and ask anyways. So I got this book in my office. It's the, the Winchester Church of the Nazarene History. So let me, for those of you that may not know this, and uh, I'm still learning a lot of our local church history, and sometimes I go to this book, and I did look at it and skimmed it again uh, one day this week as I was thinking through some different things. But early in the winter of 1945, a group of believers rented an old vacant row house, affectionately known as the Old Hole in the Wall at 504 South Loudon Street in Winchester, Virginia, with the purpose of starting a Nazarene church. Now, the Naz this church did not come to existence by accident. Myrtle Miller, one of the charter members, had attended a Nazarene church in Middletown, Ohio. Everybody say Ohio. Woo, <laughs> woo. Just, just curious, how many Penn State fans in the house? I just got one thing to say, O-H, okay? Thank you. From a girl from Winchester. <laughs> I, know, right? I know. She prayed for years for God to send someone to start a Nazarene church in Winchester. 
Vestal and Mary Swisher, being newly converted, also were looking for a church that shared their beliefs in which to raise their children. The church also attracted a young teenage girl named Dale Wilson who lived across the street and Rever across the street. Reverend Clifford Hayes, the district superintendent of the Virginia District Church of the Nazarene, met with this small group, and because of their determination and time spent in prayer, seeking God's will, began a search for a pastor. A woman on the Virginia district by the name of Ann Mason stepped in and came to Winchester to preach. She lived in Alexandria at the time. She was a petite young lady and stayed with the Miller family while she was there. Myrtle Miller had two teenage girls as well. Miss Mason held the group of believers together until Reverend E.W. McDowell and his family arrived in March of that year to become Winchester's first pastor. The first service with Reverend McDowell was held on March 18, 1945. Do you know that on March 18th of this coming year, this church will be 75 years old? What a, what a rich history. Arriving on March 15th and meeting their flock on March 18th, Reverend Ernest Woodrow McDowell and his wife Mildred and their two-year-old daughter Faye were eager to get started shepherding their flock in Winchester. They had dinner and spent the night in the homes of the congregation until they moved into their new home, an apartment above a childless couple's house on Morningside Drive on April 3rd. They were given a nice pounding by their congregation on April 23rd. And since we have our kids in with us today, let me describe to you what a pounding is. I don't want you thinking that the church gathered and literally pounded the pastor and their family. A pounding is when the, the church gets together and they fill the cupboards with food and uh, necessities for the house. So let that be a pounding is when they take care and fill cupboards and stuff. They don't literally, okay. I'm, I'm just saying it because when I first heard it, I thought that is horrible. The church did their best to take care of their pastoral family. The people of the church were welcoming to this young family, and Reverend and Mrs. McDowell loved them in return. Mildred even washed clothes in other people's homes for 11 months before finally able to purchase their first washer. She went to the town in the afternoons with neighbors or ladies of the church. In, Reverend, in June, Reverend Clifford Hayes held a zone-wide tent revival, perhaps to attract new people to the congregation. The first service in that tent was June 17th. There were 80 people in attendance one evening. Several new people joined the group on South Loudoun Street, and the Winchester Church of the Nazarene became fully organized. Reverend Clifford Hayes took Reverend and Mrs. McDowell and 14 others into membership as charter members on that day. Now, as time went on, and I kind of skipped a little bit here, when crowds were small and the outlook became dark, Mildred would use much of her five-line diary entry to underscore their dependence on the Lord, and she would write, Lord, help us. Lord, undertake. God is able, and God is answering prayer. If we could just remember that, folks, that God is working, that God is real, and the Lord will undertake, and realize that God is able, and realize that God is the God who answers prayers, folks. We have all that we need, just like Mildred wrote in that little diary. And I'm thankful today that as we begin this time together, I am thankful for what God has done in the past. I am thankful for what God is doing in the right here and the right now. And I'm also thankful for what He has yet to do. You know why I can say that? Because my God is faithful. My God goes before. So we can be thankful today that we are thankful for the things that He has yet to do. Aren't you thankful today that our God is faithful? Aren't you thankful today that our God goes before us? Our God prepares a way. And folks, it does not get any better than a God, the holy God, the creator God, literally going before us and preparing a great way. I am thankful for God this morning. Now, there was a little change up. Some of you might be looking at your bulletin and saying, well, he don't have Psalm 107 in there. I don't because I had a little change up last evening. But it really kind of worked out well because... As uh, Miss Sharon printed in the bulletin, uh, if you see on the first page, she has Psalm 107, 1. So, you know, that was prophetic. So, Sharon, you were prophetic this week. Thank you for listening to the Lord. See, that's how God works. See, goes before, right? So turn in your Bibles with me, if you will. We're going to take a look at Psalm 107. And Psalm 107 is a great book of, of giving thanks, giving thanks to the steadfastness of God, giving thanks to how God uh, chooses and literally works in and through our lives. And folks, hang your hat on that today. We have the Creator God literally working in our life. 
we have so many things. I'm going to say thanks so many times today because Psalm 107 is really a, a psalm that is littered with a, a heart full of thanksgiving. It's a, it's a psalm that just gives, bears reverence and uh, gives proof and gives evidence to what we need to be because God chooses to work in our life. God is our deliverer. Amen? Psalm 107 starts out, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Stop right there. His love endures forever. His, no, his love never grows tired. His love is never faint. His love is never weary. It is steadfast, for He is good, and His love endures forever. Now, we're going to see this theme throughout Psalm 107 today, and I promise you I will read the rest of it here in just a moment. But this is, a, this is an anthem and a theme of thanks. And uh, the Hebrews actually refer to it as, um, i got to think of the word, how it's called, chest. Not, ch not C-H-E-S-T, but it's C-H-E-S-E-D, chest. And this is, this is referred to as loyalty. So in this context, they are giving thanks for a God who is loyal. A God who is loyal. Did you hear that? What is God loyal to? Us. God is loyal. That just blows my mind that God has a loyalty aimed at us. Whew. Take that in for a second. God's loyal love, God's loyal devotion, God's loyal care working through our lives. So give thanks today to the Lord for He is good and His love literally endures forever. Verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in the desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry, they were thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in trouble, in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way, for a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and he fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness in the deepest gloom, prisoners suffering in iron chains, for they had rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help. Verse 13. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness in the deepest gloom, and he broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he breaks down the gates of bronze and cuts through the bars of iron. Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. He sent forth his word and he healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Verse 21. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them sacrifice thanks offering and tell of, of his works with songs of joy. Verse 23. Others went out on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and they staggered like drunken men. They were at their wits' end. But then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And what happens? He brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm. And he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them exult in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. He turned rivers into a desert, flowing springs into thirsty ground, and fruitful land into a salt waste because of the wickedness of those who live there. He turned the desert into pools of water and the parched ground into flowing springs. There he brought the hungry to live, and they founded a city where they could settle." They sowed fields and planted vineyards. He blessed them, and their numbers greatly increased, and he did not let their herds diminish. Then their numbers decreased, and they were humbled by oppression, calamity, and sorrow. He who pours contempt on nobles made them wander in trackless wastes. But he lifted the needy out of their affliction and increased the families like flocks. 
They're up, they, the upright see and rejoice, but all the wicked shut their mouths. Verse 43, whoever is wise, let him heed these things and consider the great love of the Lord. Let us consider the great love of the Lord this morning. I could go on all day long. I could go on all of next week, all of next month. We could sit here for the next 365 days and we would not even scratch the surface that even comes close to describing the depth of God's love for each one of us. God's loyal love to each one of us. Let us look real quick. Uh, Psalm 107, verse 6. Let's look at this once again. Then they cried out, to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress, and he led them by a straight way. Led them by a straight way. That's verse 7. Sorry, I led you astray, see? He, 6 and 7. Then he cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them in a straight way to a city where they could settle. The first pastor's wife of this church Prayed this prayer, was in her diary as we read, Lord, Lord, help us. Lord, undertake. God is able. God is answering prayer. This is the same exact theme that we see throughout Psalm 107. The cry out to the Lord, and then she write, and just as she writes in her diary, God is answering prayer. And we see this in Psalm 107. What is happening? They are crying out in their times of trouble. They are crying out in their times of distress. Does it say that the Lord failed them? No, it says that the Lord helped them. It says that the Lord delivered them. Folks, this is something that it, for you and I today. When we cry out in our trouble, when we cry out in our distress, when we are going through the stormy seas of life, God comes. He calms the storm. Literally, just by his mighty hand, he will calm the storm of your life. He will lift you out of your distress. He will help you in your times of trouble. Aren't you thankful this morning that we can come before the holy God and he literally makes the conscientious decision to work in your life? Have a fit right now for crying out loud. That is good stuff. We see this as steadfast, we see that this is loyal, and we also see, as we talked about in Sunday school this morning, we talked real briefly about the prevenient grace of God, the grace that goes before us. Uh, verse 7, he led them in a straight way to a city where they could settle. How does the Lord know how to lead? Well, he goes before us and he sees what's before and he wants nothing but good for you, so he's going to grab you by the hand and he's going to lead you in a straight way. Oh, wow. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, right? You know, don't lean on yourself, right? What's it say at the end of that? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on yourself. I'm making you guys work this morning. He will make your paths crooked, right? Okay, just make sure you're all with me. He will make your path straight. So, God, in your times of trouble and in your times of distress, he will take you by the hand and he will lead you to a straight way. You know what's really cool about prayer? When, uh, when Pastor McDowell's wife was writing this in her diary and she was praying this in her daily life, she was not only just writing it, but she was speaking it out loud. You know what's really cool about spoken word? It just floats through the atmosphere forever. I'm not a scientist, but I believe that's how it goes. And if I'm wrong, don't... Just talk to me afterwards. I don't look like a fool right now. But I choose to believe when prayers are uttered into the atmosphere, and I heard evangelists speak on this once, when prayers are uttered into the atmosphere, they literally float around the atmosphere forever. And then he added, wouldn't it be cool to be able to invent such a contraption that you could just stick way up in the air that will only, only just trap Prayers that have been spoken so you can bring it back down and listen to what people have spoke through the years, what people have spoke through the ages. So Pastor McDowell's wife, she writes, Lord, Lord, help us. Lord, undertake. God is able and God is answering prayers. She prays the prayers. She ends it with God is answering prayers. So that tells you and me today that even in 1945, God was answering prayers. Somebody say Amen. She was confirming that in her diary. When we pray our prayers, aren't you thankful that God comes and he answers prayers? 
So here today, five more weeks until the new year. Boogity, 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 right? Can you believe December 1st is five weeks away? No, five, not December 1st. January 6th. He can't do math. He can't read a calendar. The list is just really racking up, isn't it? Five weeks away from January 1, 2020. Folks, this is insane. Isn't it? We're at the end of November, for crying out loud. Where did November go? Where was October and September? They were a blur, right? You young people, I'm telling you. How many of you want to be adults right now? Let me give you a piece of advice, you young people. Don't rush it, okay? I just had a conversation just the other day with somebody. I remember when I was a kid, when I was your age, and I remember thinking, I cannot wait to be an adult. Man, I want to be an adult like right now. And now that I'm an adult, you know what my wish is? I want to be a kid. That's why I act like one. I know I don't look like one, but don't I act like one, guys? No. Come on. Thank you. You're what? He says I act like a human. Well, haha, there you have it. Out of the mouth of a babe, all right? Well, anyways, um, I can remember as a kid wanting to be an adult, and it seemed like I was never going to become one. Are you with me? Because most of, I think if not most of us, if not all of us, have desired that time as a child. I want to be an adult. I want to be an adult. It just seemed like time was dragging on, and you never got to that point. But when you got to that point, time just went. It's like day one of being an adult, I had a gray hair. (laughs) Now I got three. That's because my gray hairs are falling out, guys, okay? (laughs) Okay, good. Move along, pastor. (laughs) So she prayed those prayers. Lord, help us. Lord, undertake. God is able. God is answering prayer. All of these prayers and that praise is literally floating throughout the atmosphere. And I believe that Pastor McDowell's wife, as she prayed over her church, the Winchester Church, we're still being affected by those prayers today. Because a prayer like that, it doesn't stop. Amen? God continues to answer. And I want you to look. This is, um, this is not the sermon, but I just thought this would be a great way to fit in. I told you all last week that some of the things that are coming for 2020, I did put in your bulletin this week. Some of you have had a chance to read. Um, I just want to go through these things because there are some things that are happening, new ministries that are coming, and I'm excited. And I'm like, I'm like Pastor McDowell's wife. I'm like, Lord, when 2020 comes, help us. Lord, when 2020 comes, undertake. Lord, as we work these new ministries, as we do new things for you, Lord, you are able to do countless things, immeasurable things through these ministries. So, Lord, would you just would you just answer the prayer? And next year at this time, we're going to be standing here the week before Thanksgiving, and we're going to be able to follow up like Pastor McDowell's wife, and we're going to say, God is answering prayer. First off, when you start a new vision, when you start new ministries, the first thing you have to do is go before the Lord. Amen? You have to give it to God. And these are things, you know... Hard to believe I've been here eight months already, almost nine. I've been here long enough to carry a baby. So I guess what I'm sharing with you today, Vision 2020, that's my baby. (laughs) Oh, anyways, I was going to do some Lamaze breathing, but I did that once and Kathy told me to shut up. (laughs) It's when she was in labor, okay? I told her to breathe. I'm doing the... <laughs> my son's 23. I can still remember. It's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> Just breathe, Kathy. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> She's like, I am breathing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to get my money's worth from Lamaze. I wanted to you know, use what I was taught. So as we deliver Vision 2020 today... Number one, Wednesday night ministries for all ages. I am so excited about what's coming on our Wednesday nights. And more details will be coming in the coming days. I'm not going to just like throw out every detail because I do want to get back to the message today. But start praying about Wednesday nights here at the Win. 
we got some great things that are going to be happening for all ages. Say it with me, all ages. Look to your neighbor and say, did you hear that? All ages. All right. I got asked right away this morning, uh, so pastor, I was, looking, I was looking at the flyer here, and um, I'm just curious, what is spontaneous fellowship outings? Well, if I told you, it wouldn't be spontaneous, right? <laughs> so here's, what, here's basically what, it, what a spontaneous fellowship outing is going to look like. It may show up uh, on a certain Sunday, and I might make this big announcement, hey, next Sunday, as soon as service is over, we are going to go somewhere. And we're all going to meet there, and we're just going to go have a blast together. And whoever shows up, guess what? We're going to have spontaneous fellowship together. It's just going to be crazy. It's going to be fun. It's going to be organized chaos. But God's people need to just have fun together. Amen? And we are a bunch of nuts, aren't we? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I've met you all. You're all nutty. You think I'm nuts. I've met you too. Okay? Now, this one... Uh, Several people have talked about, and uh, um, Pat Piper came to me about the same time I was looking through some different things, and this is one of the things, but uh, we met one night. We're going to have Friday family movie nights at Win Naz. Starting in January, one night a month, we are going to, we're going to have this, it's going to be the same Friday night every month whenever we pick whatever that one will be, but those will be family-friendly movies right here at the Naz. No admission. And there will be a snack bar available. Everybody say amen. amen. There will be a snack bar available. And those snack bars each month will be run maybe by different ministries so they can have fundraisers for their ministries. So that will be a really nice thing for families. Amen. We need that for our families. So, and that's, that's going to be open and that's going to be broadcast for the whole community. So hopefully Friday family nights at the NAS will become um, a really neat thing here. So anyways... This one is uh, something that's been on my heart for a good number of years, and um, it's coming in spring 2020, we're going to have a Celebrate Recovery ministry right here at the Wynn. I am so excited about Celebrate Recovery. If, if any of you do not know, Celebrate Recovery is just a program that has helped many people that have battled many battles in their life, and it's a great way for them to come find peace and to come find a source of hope, and that's going to be run by Mark and Laura Sluss, and that's something that God has placed on their heart, and Mark's actually been through some training, and he's working through some more things as well, and also our district has a Celebrate Recovery kind of extension where we can go for help and resources as well, so this is going to be a very important ministry, um, and also, um, I don't have it formatted yet, but coming in 2020, we are going to do a big community mission project. Somebody say missions. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We are going to do a community mission project that's going to be a whole lot of fun, but it's going to be a huge blessing to people in our community. So details will be coming about that as the year progresses. I want you to take this, and I want you to just stick it in your Bible, stick it in your prayer journal, stick it on your refrigerator or whatever, and I want you specifically praying for all of these ministries and the lives that we might be able to touch through all of these things. Amen? So, you guys ready to get back to the message? I'm ready for a piece of chicken, Pastor. Hurry up. <laughs> but here's the deal. As we, as we journey through Psalm 107, we see that God is able to pick us up. We see that God is able to deliver us. And just like Pastor McDowell's wife was praying all those years ago, we pray these prayers today, and it's the same result. God moves. Psalm 107 was written long, long before Pastor McDowell's wife, right? What do we see in the accounts today? Four different times. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. It's the same thing happening each time they cry out. God shows up. Don't you love when God shows up? Four times we see this. And he delivered them from their distress. We see it again. He satisfies the thirsty. We see that he saves them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the deep, deepest gloom. He breaks their chains. We see this, he saves them from, her, from their distress. He sent forth his word, and he healed them, and he rescued them from the grave. We see it again, verse 28, and they cried out to the Lord, and he brought them out of their distress. 
He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. Folks, it does not get any better than a God who literally chooses to just say, okay, and he takes that step into the step, and that step is toward and in your life, and he works in and through your life. He works in and through your situation. So go back to verse 1. What should we do? We should give thanks to the Lord. We should give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love endures forever. Remember this. Bookmark this. Because we see proof that God works when folks cry out, when folks are in trouble. God shows up. Always notice the follow-up. The follow-up is always a rescue. The follow-up is always a delivery. The follow-up is always peace. The follow-up is always grace. Aren't you blessed today? Verse 43. Verse 43. Whoever is wise, let him heed these things and consider the great love of the Lord. Let's just incorporate a little bit of that Hebrew word that I gave you, chest. Okay, chest, meaning the loyalty and the steadfastness of God. Whoever is wise, let him heed these things. What do we heed? What do we consider? Uh, what do we think about? We consider the great love. We consider the great loyalty. We consider the great steadfastness of the Lord in our life. I don't know about you, but that's something to celebrate today. That God is loyal to us. Man, we are a blessed people this morning. I like to ask my pastors that I asked to come help me. We're going to go into a time of communion in our closing today. And we're going to take our own time to give thanks this Sunday before Thanksgiving. And Pastor Dan, I would ask that if once you are done, if you would go serve our sound booth as well and uh, the nursery and all that as well. Uh, we're going to do a little bit different today. Pastor Willis, Pastor Dan, and Pastor Heather, they're going to stand at the, the three aisles here in the middle. And we're going to ask that you come forward uh, during our time of communion and uh, just take the, take the bread and take the juice back to your seat and we'll partake of the elements together. But in this, the spirit of giving thanks, uh, we, we see this account as Jesus met with the disciples. In Luke chapter 22, verse 14, it says, When the hour came... Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he stopped and he gave thanks. Catch this. He gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. In verse 19, we see he takes the bread and he gave thanks, the word tells us. And he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. You ever just wonder in that moment as Jesus was with the disciples? Why did he give thanks? Because he knew what he was about to endure. He knew what he was about to go through. I don't know about you, but if I'm about to undergo something that hard, I don't know if I could just stop and give thanks. But here's what really blesses me through this. As Jesus was modeling this before the disciples, twice we see where he stops and he gives thanks. What was he giving thanks for? I, I, I kind of like to believe that as he was giving thanks... He was saying, thank you, Lord, that we are about to fulfill your plan, that we are about to fulfill your will, that we are about to save and change people's lives forever. He stopped and he gave thanks probably to say, Lord, thank you that I could be a part of your saving grace. Thank you for the fact that the fine folks of Winchester first, the people in the neighborhoods, the people in the community, the people in the nations, that I have this opportunity, Father, to share in your will and in your plan.
to save the lives of each and every individual. So that if they just simply would believe in you, Lord, and through me, they will have everlasting life. So maybe that's what he stopped and he gave thanks about. I believe he stopped and he gave thanks for you. Amen. Let us pray together, Lord, as we begin this time of sharing and reflection and giving thanks together. Lord, it is my prayer that as we partake of these elements together, that as we, we take the bread that represents your body and we take the juice that represents the blood that was shed, that we would just stop for just a, just a second and realize it's through your broken body and it's through your shed blood that we have an opportunity for eternal life today. So, Father, as we come before you and we partake of these elements together, Father, let us take a spiritual inventory of ourselves. Father, maybe, maybe somebody here today is holding a grudge against a brother or a sister. We need to come before you as clean before we take these elements. So, Lord, if somebody has that feeling today, may they just take this moment right now to ask for forgiveness and to come before you clean with a pure heart and a pure spirit. Now, Father, as we take this time together, let it be a time of reflection, but also let it be a time of celebration, a celebration of new life. Because through your blood and through your body, we are free today, and we give you thanks. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you'll just make your way to the aisle that's closest to you and line up and single file, you can come take the elements together and take them back to your seat.
as we come before him this morning, just in the same spirit as Jesus did. Let us stop and just give thanks. Give thanks today for the body that was broken for each one of us. Let us give thanks and take and eat together. Scripture tells us that after he took the bread, he gave thanks just in the same way as he did. He took that cup and he said, this represents my blood, which is shed for you. Let us give thanks for the blood that was shed for us and made us free today. Let's take together. Father, we thank you today. Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy that is so real in our lives. Father, we are thankful today that you made a way for each one of us. You made that way through your son, Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that made all the difference in our lives. So, Father, as we close out this portion of our worship with you today, Lord, it is my prayer that you would just go with us. Just as we looked into these scriptures today, you are steadfast. And, Lord, you are, you are loyal in your love and in your care for each one of us. So, Lord, as we go from this place today, empower us and strengthen us to be who you need us to be. And, Father, this Thanksgiving week, let us walk out of here and just live every day of our life with a heart of thanksgiving. And, Father, as we, I know many will be traveling this week, I pray that you just watch over, that you'll protect, and that you'll guide as everybody's hitting the roadways to spend time with their families. Oh Lord, may you just bless everybody's fellowship and their times with their families. And Father, we just give you thanks and praise once again. But Father, most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus. And Father, just be with us as we go from this place. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people say together, amen. Thank you. God bless. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And make sure you greet the, take time to greet those around you.